بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الذي خلق الخلق لیعبدوه وحبب الیہم الایمان لیذکروه واسبغ علیہم نعمه ظاہرتا و باطنتا لیشکروه صل اللہ علیہ وعلى آلہ وصحبہ الذین صحبوه ونصروه الى یوم الدین وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجید وفرقانه الحمید أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا صدق الله العظيم There is an Arabic proverb which goes as follows كن ابن من شئت واكتسب أدبا يغنيك محموده عن النسب You can be born in any home and any time and any era but if you've got value, mannerism, and conduct, you don't need any other form of introduction. You don't have to introduce yourself, where your roots are, where you hail from, whose son you are. Your values, your mannerism, your conduct will stand tall enough and adequate representation for you. Sadly, today we live in a society bereft and devoid of morals and values and the messages that are advo being advocated through billboards, through mass media is not responsible marketing, is not responsible enough to, to coerce, to educate, to groom, to mold people into good values and responsible mannerism. Islam teaches us uh, the importance of, of good values from every aspect, every word, every letter, every text of the Quran. So I want to just give some introductory comments and then focus on one particular aspect in terms of the etiquettes of uh, uh, hosting, entertaining, being a guest, being a host, etc. In the tale, the story, the narrative of Musa and Khidr alayhi salatu wasalam, they are rich lessons, they are rich lessons. Uh, amongst the many lessons the scholars like, write, فِيهِ إِسْتِحْبَابُ الرِّحْلَةِ لِلْعِلْمِ We learn from the fact that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam traveled and he journeyed to the confluence of the two oceans to meet Khidr. And what was the backdrop of that journey because of which he embarked on it? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam stood up, he was delivering a talk and somebody asked him, Musa, who's the most learned? Man a'lamun nas. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam said, Ana, I. Academically, that is the correct reply because the Prophet is the most learned of his people. But of course, the tarbiyah and the nurturing of a Prophet takes place to the highest possible level through which anyone can be given good values and molding. And that is directly by Allah Himself because he's an example for his people until the end of time. So as much as his reply and his response was correct academically, the hadith of Bukhari, I quote the exact words, because when we discuss the context of Anbiya, we limit ourselves to the vocabulary of the Quran and hadith. We don't add on from our side. When we discuss any, any context or any slip up, we limit, restrict ourselves to the vocabulary of the Quran and Hadith. The Hadith of Bukhari, فَعَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُوسَى Allah the Almighty modestly reproached Musa alayhi salam. إِذْ لَمْ يَرُدَّ الْعِلْمَ إِلَيْهِ Because he did not direct knowledge to Allah. O Musa, who is the most learned? Me. The answer academically is correct. The hadith of Bukhari, Allah then modestly reproached him. So even the ulama say, when the fish swallowed Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam, this was ta'deeban la ta'deeban. This was ta'deeban la ta'deeban. This was to teach Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam uh, a higher level of, of, of mannerism and adab and never ever to punish a Nabi. A Nabi is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why you will realize, and if you're familiar with Quranic language, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
alerts a Nabi wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, modestly reproaches a Nabi, the verses that will follow thereafter will indicate that the Nabi uh, is, is, is very beloved, sacred, and exalted in the eyes of Allah. وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى ثُمَّ جَتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَدَى Now, it's, it's deep language. Asa and Gawa are strong words in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referenced the mistake of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. But that does not drop in the exalted status and position of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam. So Allah then told Musa alayhi salatu was salam to go to the junction of the two oceans, the confluence of the two oceans. And meet there, there's a man called Khidr or Khadir. It's pronounced both ways. And Musa alayhi salam then embarked on this journey. In Bayanul Quran, it is written, the wisdom of tasking Musa to embark on this journey was fil to impress upon Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam the importance of being cautious when replying. What about you and I? How do we talk? How casually do we blurt? How do we reply? We, we just make comments. We don't realize what we're saying. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slipped up to say, Insha'Allah. There was a pause in revelation for 15 days to impress upon him the adab and the etiquette and the importance of Insha'Allah. The delegation came and asked him three questions. And they made this the basis of his prophethood. They said, tell us about Dhul Qarnain. We spoke about it briefly yesterday. Tell us about the seven sleepers and tell us about the soul. If you can answer these three questions, we consider you a prophet. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you can come back. And of course, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would ask Jibreel, um, a, 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 a person from uh, a, a priest came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ayyul biqa'i khair. Which is the noblest piece of land? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I don't know. I will find out from Jibreel. May, may Allah give us that humility. This is Allah's Nabi. <laughs> like, there's nobody more learned on earth than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That we can also say we don't know. Askutu hatta yaji a Jibreelu. When Jibreel came, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Jibreel, I've been asked the question, the authentic hadith, which is the noblest piece of land? Jibril said, I don't know, I'll find out. I don't know, I'll find out. La ilaha illallah. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's Allah knows, that's it. Only Allah knows, that's it. Well, I don't know why do we want to assume we know better, we understand better, we have more info, we have more knowledge, we have this and that. Allah knows. Jibril then comes back to the Prophet wasallam. And he says, min Allahi ma minhu qattu. I was blessed with such proximity in the court of Allah. And this means in elevation of status and not physical proximity because Allah is above physical location. <coughs> min Allahi ma minhu qattu. I was blessed with such proximity that I never enjoyed such a rank, status, and proximity in, in status ever before. And the scholars say the wisdom of this is subhanallah. The reason for the added elevation of Jibreel in this particular context, because Jibreel's position was as an envoy of the beloved of Allah. So that gave him an added level of proximity. It is a common practice that you give additional recognition to the envoy of your beloved. No, join the queue. Brother Ibrahim sent me. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Ibrahim, you know, me and Ibrahim go. Tell me, I come here with you. Tell me, I got the camera. 
Mane huka watame Ibrahim na dos. Suddenly when he introduced via someone close to me, the relation was just different. And then of course, uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam conveyed the question of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, and uh, the answer was given to Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. And he returned to Nabi alayhi salam that khayrul biqa'i masajiduha, masajiduha, wa sharrul biqa'i aswaquha. Look, look at the hadith. The best place, the noblest place is the masjid. The most wicked place is the marketplace. Mufti Ashiq Ilahi Rahimahullah, in his commentary of this hadith, he writes, someone might counter argue and say, but there are so many places on the earth that are much more evil than the marketplace. Why is the hadith said, Sharrul Biqai Aswaquha? He said, because in an ideal society, those other wicked places weren't supposed to exist. But a marketplace has to exist. But with its existence, it's not the best of places. So Allah told you, stop all your trade and come for Juma. And after you're done with Juma, you have to go back and earn. But hang out. When you go back there, فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا kathira. فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةِ فَانْتَشِرُوا So in Arabic language where you have uh, a permissibility post a prohibition, then that amr comes for ibahat. It comes to undo the restriction. So first was the restriction. When the adhan is sounded, drop your trade. فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةِ When the prayer has been concluded, فَانْتَشِرُوا Which is a command, spread out. Of course, it's not mandatory to open your shop, but it's ibahat permissible. فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ and go search, you have to. You got to go there, you have to go there. It is an absolute because you got to generate the revenue, etc. You got to work, but remember Allah in abundance. Anyway, I said Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam was sent to Khidr and the wisdom and the motive behind this was the impression of the importance of precaution in speech. Adab and etiquette is so essential and important. So, fihi istihbabu rihlati lil ilmi wa fadlu talabihi. Fihi istihbabu ta'wili al alim wa tarku, tarku al i'tiradi alayhi. In the journey of Musa and Khidr, Musa alayhi salam observes many things which he couldn't comprehend face value. But subsequently he was informed of the deeper wisdom. So one of the etiquettes we also observe that if you see a person with knowledge and wisdom or a senior doing something which face value might not gel with your comprehension, don't just vehemently oppose it, oppose it give it some potential uh, positive interpretation. Yes, if you cannot reconcile it totally, it's a separate thing, something that's blatantly wrong. That, that's a separate thing. But we learn from here. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam observed a lot of things. He said, what is this? Why have you removed the plank from the boat? Do you want to sink everyone? Obviously, there was a deeper wisdom. So we learn from this as well with seniors, with learned people. Don't just go and object. Don't just go and attack. Don't just go and criticize. These are adab. These are deductions from the tale, the tale story and the narrative of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Then third thing, what do we learn from this year is تَقْدِيمُ الْمَشِيئَةِ فِي الْأَمْرِ لا إله إلا الله تَقْدِيمُ الْمَشِيئَةِ فِي الْأَمْرِ When Musa alayhi salatu was salam went to Khidr, and then he said, I want to stay in your company. And here again, the adoption of the words, Adab. He said, Hal ala an mimma Is it possible for you to accommodate me in your setting so I can learn from you? You want to learn from a scholar. You need to work around his time. If he works around your time, information will be transmitted, not knowledge. 
We need knowledge, not information. We're living in an era with uh, a plethora of information, and we're starved of knowledge. There is a plethora, there's just ample information, but we're starved of knowledge. هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا؟ Can I perhaps please sit in your company and if you can allow me to benefit from you? So Sayyidina Khidr said, إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا. You, you, you don't have the capacity to endure and persevere with me. Now, here's the etiquette deduction from the verse. قال ستجدني Insha Allah Sabira. He said, Insha Allah, I will persevere. So the scholars say the ayah releases a hint that the correct etiquette is when you use the word Insha Allah, you bring it forward in your discussion. So you don't tell someone, I will meet you tomorrow, Insha Allah, but rather the correct way. You know, in English, it's, you know, grammatically, you have not constructed your sentence correct. By English grammar, there's three mistakes in this year. Well, Islamically, the cue we get from the verse, Satajiduni, insha Allah sabira, insha Allah tomorrow I will meet you. Meaning, insha Allah is brought forward. La ilaha illallah. We are learning all the time. Number four we learn from this year is Jamila La Yutraku Ami. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam and Khidr they came to a particular locality and they asked the people for some food and help and assistance because ahlaha they were hungry. But unfortunately these people declined. Notwithstanding their hostility. Sayyidina Khidr, as he was exiting, he seen a wall that was about to collapse. He did not reciprocate their uncouth behavior in a like manner. But he rescued that wall to save them from potential harm, beneath which were the treasures as well of, the, of those orphans. So what's the lesson? Ala anna sun al jamila la yutraku walaw ma'al ami. Continue being kind even if that person on the other side is unkind. You got a good habit of smiling? Keep on smiling. You don't have to frown when someone doesn't reply to smile. In English they say, a smile thaws an icy stare. You know, someone's giving you an icy look. Cold, cold, cold. But if you keep on smiling, you're going to melt that, uh, that stare. How long is he going to keep on staring? Because you smile, it's like... At some point, it's going to break. It's going to be an icebreaker. Excuse the pun. <laughs> a smile confuses an approaching frown. A smile confuses an approaching. So, the point I'm saying is, if you learn, learn adab and respect and mannerism, then that takes a person a long way. Now, to speak more specifically on the adab and the etiquettes, I mean, our deen is in every regard. And there's dedicated books that speak about, you know, the etiquettes of every aspect. The etiquettes of ziyafat, the etiquettes of hospitality, of being a host and being a guest. Suffice to say that being a host is such a great thing that the Prophet ﷺ said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yukrim daifa. So this is a particular uh, a tone in the hadith that appears. If you believe in Allah in the last day, you'll behave like this. If you believe in Allah in the last day, you'll only do things like this. You know, if you're my son, you'll know what the reply is. A boy does, you know, my, my dad's got this uh, word of ease. Whenever we do things with me, my boy, you know my signature. You know my handwriting. You know my handwriting. Meaning you, you understand my values. That's exactly what I wanted from you. 
I was not there. This happened. Subsequently, I came to know, and you did this. Alhamdulillah, you know my handwriting. You know what I want. Well, the hadith uses an expression, if you believe in Allah and the last day, then surely you'll be a person who honors your guest. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir, falyakul khayran awliya smut. The one who believes in Allah in the last day, he'll either be speaking in value, in meaning, or he'll be silent. He won't do anything else. Somebody asked Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, Allah has privileged you to be his friend. Right? I mean, what an honor. And somebody mentioned something so profound that uh, it really matters where you feature in the eyes of Allah. Where your rating is with Allah, not where humans' rating is. How many times you see when a president is sworn in, his ratings are good, and over the years, then you see how his ratings drop. His party, his cabinet, he himself, he came in all like the savior of the planet, man. Uh, with what an inaugural bash. Wow, like this guy's going to rescue the planet, man. I don't have to mention names. It's, you've seen this thing playing out so many times. Oh, this guy, I'm telling you, this is different. And just with the passage of time, the ratings are just right down, gone. Plummeted nose, nose dive, over. The question is, what is your ratings with Allah? What is my ratings with Allah? You know, when Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik asked Abu Hazim, Layta shi'ri, ma lana indallahi ghadan. Abu Hazim, you know, it bothers me all the time. How am I going to fare before Allah? I mean, how's things going to play out for me? He said, A'rid amalaka ala kitab illa tajidhu. Just screen your actions through the lenses of the Quran and the reply will pop up what your destiny will be. I'm very worried what's going to happen to me tomorrow. He said, no problem, no problem. Take your actions, screen it through the lenses of the Quran. Select Jannat. And then put your actions there. So Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik said, where will I find it in the Quran? He said, inna al-abrar la fi na'im wa inna al-fujjar la fi jahim. Noble, pious people will be in paradise. Wicked will be in hell. You can work out where you stand, my brother, and I can work out where I stand. You know what's the problem today? Let me tell you something frankly, candidly, and I'm talking to myself. Right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't, unfortunately, I keep on telling people, if I could only speak on what I practice, probably I'll only have one lecture in life. So we advocate it with the hope that, inshallah, Allah gives me tawfiq and Allah gives everyone tawfiq. The, Quran, the hadith says, the Prophet wasallam said, sometimes a person utters a statement. And that statement is so hazardous, it's so poisonous, it's so lethal that it subjects him to a drop in hell like the distance between the east and the west. That's how catastrophic the implications of that utterance is. But the Prophet ﷺ goes on to say, the person who uttered it he justifies his utterance by saying, La yara biha ba'asa. I don't think it was bad. Oh, I, I think that guy's he's, he's super sensitive, man. In a key kewainiya. Ito wat wat matapi jai. Jab admi apni galati ka judge, apni galati ka judge, or dusro ki galati yo ka hakim banega. So fir fasla honga fasla nahi hoga. Fir fasla hoga fasla nahi hoga. When I'm the judge of my own utterance and I'm the advocate of yours, so I'm judge and jury. I sit on both sides. I said, no, no, you're overreacting. No, I, 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 what I said is okay. <laughs> then, then, then gaps will be created. Decisions won't be made. So, so catastrophic, but because you judging yourself. No, you, no one is more tolerant to anyone's mistakes than each one is to his own. Remember that. Every one of us, our threshold of tolerance to ourselves is the highest. And then our spouse and our children and our family. 
simple analogy. I know it's a bit offensive, but just to make you understand. You never offended by the stench of your own feces. Did you ever hear a man when he's defecating in the loo, he's spraying and defecated? I know it's a bit laughable, forgive me. But I just want to show you how tolerant you are. And if you sit in here and somebody probably just release a slight wind. A bari kolayar. Wa ta'atuna fi nadikumul munkar. One of the tafsir of this year in Qawm Elud, the nation used to mock at people who used to pass wind. This was also fi nadikum in your gatherings. You do these things. So one of the things, somebody passed wind and he's like a old, you know, big laugher. <laughs> like, Really? Sayyidina Umar was sitting there and uh, Jari radiallahu anhu was there as well and uh, somebody passed wind. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, whoever has passed wind, can you stand up and go and renew your ablution now? Subhanallah, these people were so amazing. So Jari radiallahu anhu held Umar, said, Umar, can I whisper something to you? He said, go for it. Why don't you request everybody to renew their wudu so the brother who's win, who passed wind is just camouflaged. Sayyidina Umar said, Ni'ma sayyidu anta fil jahiliya wa ni'ma sayyidu anta fil islam. Wallah, you were amazing before deen and Allah has doubled your wisdom after Islam. We all will stand up and make wudu. Adab, adab, etiquettes, how to behave, how to be sensitive, how to watch. I've, I've said this in my talks umpteen times. There are some questions you don't ask people. You don't press those nerves. You're still not married? So many years, no kids. Do you have control of kids? And you decide fertility? Do you decide conception? Only boys, no girls. Only girls, no boys. Do you decide gender? You're still renting. When you own a house, you decide economy. How do you ask these questions? How do you hurt people like this? We, we, we lack it totally. And you can destroy a person completely just by, by that wrong utterance of yours. Who can be greater than our mother Aisha radiallahu anha? Ya mubghidhi la ta'ti qabra Muhammadi falbaytu bayti wal makanu makani inni khusistu ala nisa'i Muhammadin bisifati birrin tahtahunna ma'ani wa sabaqtuhunna ila al-fadaili kulliha fassabqu sabqi wal ananu anani Maridan Nabi, you were mata bain at a raibi, fell yomu yomi, was Zamanu Zamani, Zoji Rasulullah, Hilam Aragay Rahu, Allah, who's a wajani bihi, Wahabani, Watahu Jibri, Lul Aminu. Oh, my word, this couplet is just next level. Aisha Radiallana says, I have the privilege, the honor that I only have one husband, and that's Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All my co-wives were previously married. I'm the only one that only knows one husband, and that's the greatest husband who ever inhabited Mother Earth. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha one day said to a co-wife, Safiya, she's short. Okay, but key. But short. Nabi Sassam said, Aisha, Aisha. You've said something, if we take that statement and we give it a liquid form, authentic narration, and we put it in the water, the oceans will be contaminated. The context of this was speak correctly with the necessary etiquettes to a disbeliever. Ya you alladina amanu taqullah wa kulu kawlan sadida. Sadida, you must see what the ahlul lugha write. Sadid means beauty speech, 
honest speech, correct speech, refined speech, comprehensive. The Ahlul Lugha, the philologists, the grammarians say everything about goodness in speech has been encapsulated in the word Sadida. Okay, time is running out. So we were saying about the etiquettes. I was saying about Sayyidina uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Someone asked him, <coughs> and then from there we said, you know, where our, your grading is with Allah. Your grading is with Allah. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, somebody asked him, oh Ibrahim, Allah has made you his friend. Uh, why has Allah privileged you to this? Amongst the three things he said, he said, I eat with visitors in my house constantly. I eat with visitors in my house constantly. The hadith of Ibn Majah, خَيْرُ بَيْتِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بَيْتٌ فِيهِ يَتِيمٌ يُحْسَنُ إِلَيْهِ A Muslim home's excellence is measured by how many orphans eat in that house. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Okay, so there are adab and etiquettes of the host and then the visitor. So let's speak first of the host. We spoke about man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Whoever brings iman on Allah in the final day. There can be no greater host than Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. So the Quran says, وَلَمَّا جَاءَتُ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى So when the angels came to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, and from there they were heading to Lut alayhi salam. And likewise, the Quran speaks about both these incidents respectively. And here there's another reflection which I've come across in the tafsir. I'm just having a flash, so I'll share it with you. Subhanallah, these angels come at the house of Ibrahim alayhi salam. They come to his door. Qala salamun. He greets, they greet. In his heart, qawmun munkarun. He said, I don't know them. Obviously, he didn't say that, but they came to his house. But the words of the Quran, qawmun munkarun. But somebody is at his door. Etiquettes, just respect, welcome. فَمَا لَبِثَ أَنْ جَاءَ بِعِجْلٍ حَنِيذٍ It wasn't long and he roasted a calf and presented it. I'm giving you the words of the Quran. He himself says, within himself, the Quran expresses that this was his reaction, that he didn't know who they were. They came in human forms and they were angels. Not knowing the person, the etiquette of hospitality is you offer the best that you have. First etiquette. The most wholesome and the best of what you have, you offer it. Ja'abi'ijlin hanith. فَلَمَّا رَأَىٰ أَيْدِيَهُمْ لَا تَصِلُ إِلَيْهِ نَكِرَهُمْ The angels, these were angels, so they're not going to eat. So they sat and they didn't make any movement towards the food. نَكِرَهُمْ So he became uncomfortable. You know someone just said, eat. Can you drink something? I don't know, I need to be like this, lah. You're going to become a bit uneasy. So from here, Ibn Kathir says, the etiquette of a visitor is that when food is presented to you, go towards it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. No issues. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. Just, just create some, some movement. The malaika then told him that uh, we are angels, so, you know, we're not humans. In this also the ulama write, وَفِي هَذِهِ الْقِصَّةِ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ قَدْ يَنْسَدُّ بَابُ الْفِرَاسَةِ عَلَىٰ الْكَامِلِينَ لِحِكَمٍ يُرِيدُهَا اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ That a man like Ibrahim who receives revelation and Allah in his wisdom had momentarily veiled it from him that these were angels for a wisdom known better to Allah. The angels came to the house of Lut alayhi salam. He went into panic. He didn't know they were angels. But Allah in his wisdom cho chose not to inform him in advance. So sometimes in life, even the most capable of people are veiled from certain understanding for a wisdom known to Allah. 
for a wisdom known to Allah. Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam is in, 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 in Kanaan and Yusuf is in the well close by and he doesn't get the, the smell of Yusuf. Fast forward 40 years later when Allah had decreed for the reunion, he says, Inni la ajidu riha Yusuf. And now he's at the distance of three weeks according to the narrations so far and he's getting the fragrance. And here he was right here close and he didn't get it. Allah has a time and when he's decided the time, that's when it's going to come out. So he was so close. It's not like as Yaqub grew older, his smelling sense got stronger. No, this was the time Allah had decreed it. The third etiquette we learn from here, subhanallah. فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ Ibrahim alayhi salam presented the food to his guest. If logistically that is possible, don't subject your guest to get up, but present the food to them where they are sitting. The verse of the Quran, Ibn Kathir, you can go read it. I'm not giving, I'm telling you, Quran is teaching me adab, is teaching you adab. Fakarrabahu. Fourth etiquette. And this is very important. And I, I really, you know, take offense to this one here. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Ala ta'akulun. Why don't you eat? Eat. He didn't say kulu. He did not impose on his guests to eat. He encouraged them to eat. Don't dish out for someone. Each one knows his capacity. Each one knows his dietary. Each one knows his health. Don't force anyone. That can be the most uncouth, insensitive thing you could do to anyone. You force the person, he knows his health, that might compromise his sleep. That might create a blockage in his stomach. That might trigger constipation for him. Everybody's dietary is different. So offer your best. Look at the, the, the next etiquette. Faraga ila ahlihi. Faraga. My word, man. You know when I say adab. Faraga ila ahlihi. Fajaa. The word raga means he sneaked out stealthily. The word fur indicates his return was swift. So, as a host, even if you need to slip out in the kitchen, don't leave your guests for extended periods. As much as you need to probably check on that side and, you know, just stabilize things, the kitchen is also not too rocky because if you get guests, you know, man, yana, man, metera, mehman, then, then things can get a bit uh, unstable there as well. So now you've got to deal with emotions, maybe that side, to just keep it calm. The word raga means to sneak out stealthily, discreetly, and then to return quickly. So you honor your guests, you spend maximum time with him, you offer him the best that you have, you bring the food in front of him, and you don't impose on him to eat. These are the teachings and the etiquettes and the adabs of our deen. Now as a guest, and I'm, I'm making no insinuation here to anything. May Allah bless you all here, you know. Huzaifa uh, has been an amazing host. Wallahi al-Azim. May Allah bless him. May Allah reward him. May Allah reward his family. Honestly. It's important. I used to always tell my students this year. I said, before you study by someone, study the person. Before you study by someone, first study him. See if your natures can gel. This is how his nature is. You need to learn. You need to learn. That is why one of the etiquettes of dua of a student is what? Allahumma stur anni aiba muallimi. Oh Allah, conceal the mistake of my teacher from me. We don't read the dua, oh Allah, give me a teacher without a mistake, because that was Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is gone. So what's the dua we read? Oh Allah, conceal it. Why? Because if I get exposed to the mistake of my teacher, then automatically that will drop my respect and that will bar the transmission. Because as soon as my respect drops, I'm like, ah, that is why the scholars say two people generally get deprived from a great scholar. 
those that are too close to him and his children because they get exposure to the weaknesses of this person. And as soon as you get exposure, when you were coming close to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was no weakness. The closer you get, the greater the fragrance. But anyone besides Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you've got to keep a safe distance. Because I'm a human, you're a human. There's a different side to each one of us. So as soon as you get too close up exposure from, I mean, in Sahih Muslim, they, okay, time is going to go. Let's get back to where we were. Oh. Okay, so the etiquettes of a uh, visitor. So the Prophet ﷺ had his walima with Zainab radiallahu anha. And the walima of Zainab radiallahu anha was a more lavish walima compared to the other walimas. Some were simple, some were a bit more elaborate. Lavish, not by our understanding. I need to qualify that here. It's not all this aesthetics and deco and all that, please, because, you know, uh, that's taking it completely out. But compared to the others, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had appointed Anas radiallahu anha. He said, Anas, Whoever you see, tell them to come in, they're invited. The only thing is they can come 10 at a time because the house won't accommodate more. The house won't accommodate. They must say Bismillah and eat. So they started coming in and eating and, and leaving and eating and leaving. And after many had consumed and they had left, few Sahaba innocently just sat down and they were having a social discussion. So you've come to someone's house and uh, you, you know, now you sit in there. Obviously, there's a process. Things need to wrap up. It needs to be concluded. The host has been generous. He's accommodated you. But there's arrangements, logistics that need to happen. And Islam is very clear cut. It's like, be straight. Islam says it. So Nabi alayhi salam was very modest. In fact, the narration say that Zainab radiallahu anha, kind of faced the wall and she was just covering herself because it wasn't like, you know, you in one room, he's in the lounge, he's in the, uh, you know, outside, he's in the garden. No, it was a simple, small, basic apartment, nothing lavish or elaborate. So Zainab radiallahu had to keep herself covered one side and these companions were sitting. It's a verse of the Quran, Surah Al-Ahzab, and they're talking along. Now their prolonged presence is annoying Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the super bashful person that uh, he cannot tell someone Nabi Sassam was too modest. Nabi Sassam was too modest. Was too modest. You've you got to appreciate. Nabi Sassam was just too, too, too generous. He was too selfless. There was, there was nothing about his own. It was about everyone. And this prolonged stay caused discomfort to Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and the household. So Allah then revealed the verses. The beauty. We're learning. Adab. You know what, what bothers me? We, we think we reach a certain point in our life. We know it all. And Nabi gets revelation till his last breath. How can I reach a time that nobody tells me? That is why I, I, in my managed counseling, you know, often when it's elderly people, it's very difficult to, to resolve and navigate and everything. Uh, I say, you know, I couldn't resolve it because the baggage goes back through so many years and it's so intertwined and it, because of this and that. And it's like each one's got a story and a history and a context and a complex. And ooh, you're like, like, how am I going to resolve this whole thing here in a, in a one day? I say, I couldn't resolve it. But this exercise where you came face to face, because otherwise both are sleeping separate, living separate, and your wife said her side of things, and you said your side of things, we didn't resolve the marriage, but at least I think both your egos got a good disciplinary exercise. Yes. It's a nice deflation to your ego, because you're a boss, you're a big man, you run the show, you're in charge, so nobody tells you, your children can't talk, your workers can't talk, those around you can't talk, so what the hell you think of yourself? Somebody needs to tell me, somebody needs to tell you, and if you've reached a point in your life, ask yourself, nobody can tell you. <laughs> your hole, you dig in your own hole. And Nabi has been told by Allah, the Prophet of Allah is telling the Sahaba, it's passing on. But you've reached the point in your life. No, nobody wants to, no, no. Because I don't want to jeopardize my job. I don't, I don't want to, it's going to come at this spread. So if nobody can tell me, I'm on dangerous grounds. Okay. 
So Allah revealed the verse. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tadkhulu buyut an-nabiyyi. Now although the ulama say that the, the, it came in the context of Nabi Alayhi but the hukam is general. I, I'll try and wrap up. Just keep focus here so we can wrap up and then we all will engage in dua inshallah. What time is the time today? 50? Right, okay. So we have a few minutes. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu o you who believe la tadkhulu buyut an-nabiyyi illa an yu'zana lakum. Don't enter the house of a Nabi until consent is given to you, which applies to all. Don't come to someone's house when you haven't been invited and you impose on him and you make it awkward for him and he has to. That is against the etiquettes of being a guest. That is not the teachings of Islam. If I didn't get a clear-cut invite, no. There's nothing to feel bad about. It is these transparent values, core values, that will actually bring harmony in our society and there will be no ill feelings in our hearts because things will be so open, frank, honest and candid. And don't come ahead of time anticipating the preparation. If you come to someone's event before time, you know how much difficulty you can subject the host into. The poor woman is in the kitchen, dashing, getting. Now she needs to do the last part to, to just decorate, to garnish, to prepare, to present. Probably needs to get, get herself a quick splash in the shower, get ready and everything sort out. And you've arrived early. You've created so much stress and inconvenience to the family. Ghayrat nazirina ina. Look at the richness of our deen. وَلَكِنْ إِذَا دُعِيتُمْ But when you're invited, فَدْخُلُوا Then enter. فَإِذَا طُعِمْتُمْ When you've consumed the meal, فَانْتَشِرُوا Then disperse. وَلَا مُسْتَأْنِسِينَ لِحَدِيثِ And do not engage chit-chat and social discussions. إِنَّ ذَلِكُمْ كَانَ يُؤْذِ النَّبِيَّ Your presence post the meal in the house of the Nabi causes him inconvenience. I'm giving you verbatim translation. But modestly, he's unable to express it to you. But Allah says it as it is. And Allah announces it and proclaims it as it is. The scholars say the word yu'zin nabiyya, it causes discomfort, indicates to us that if the host wants you to stay, now it would be preferable for you to sit and talk. Because he's not inviting you to come spend the day with us. So if the host tells you sit, now there's no inconvenience. So as much as the Quran says, after you eat, disperse. Because some people said, I come eat and go. The host tell you, he said, no, Allah said in the Quran, you must go. No, brother, 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 understand things correctly. The Nabi of Allah needed to meet with his spouse. The Sahaba was sitting. In Bayanul Quran, there are two reflections there. I'll mention this and conclude. Number one, Dalla ala anna al istihya'a min al sadri bil haqqi fi amthali hadihi min muqtadiyyat al tab'i al kareem. We learn that on instances like this, the modesty of a bashful person makes it difficult for him to express or articulate himself. You, you see people who are very soft-natured, like I knew one of my teachers, he was very, like, we are his students, but if, if he needed to call you out of the class, he won't call you. He'll just come and stand outside the class and say, Ustad, sir, and you, 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 it's just not in his nature. And uh, some people's nature is very different. They'll just walk in your class, you know? So obviously the Prophet ﷺ was very, very modest. وَالصَّدْعُ بِالْحَقِّ مِنْ مُقْتَضِيَّاتِ الْعَقْلِ الْحَكِيمِ فَيُرَجِّحُ الْمُصْلِحُ مُقْتَضَ الْعَقْلِ عَلَى مُقْتَضَ الطَّبْعِ But of course, the infinite wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the proclamation of the truth so that the truth can be heard, understood, implemented. Second one. What do you learn from this year? وُجُوبُ إِسْلَاحِ الْمُعَاشَرَةِ The importance of reforming the social conduct of our society. وُجُوبُ إِسْلَاحِ الْمُعَاشَرَةِ وَحُرْمَةُ مَا يُتَأَذَّى بِهِ الْغَيْرِ And we learn from this 
that anything that is causing people disturbance and inconvenience by the dictates of our Sharia is unlawful and impermissible. كَمَنْ يُدْعَى فِي وَقْتٍ مُعَيَّنٍ مَعَ جَمَاعَةٍ فَيَتَأَخَّرُ مِنْ غَيْرِ عُذْرٍ وَقَدْ كَثُرَ هَذَا الْإِيذَاءُ حَتَّى فِي أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ وَالْمَشَائِخِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمُشْتَكَةِ For example, you've been invited at a particular time in a particular place and you delay just out of laziness or not being disciplined enough and you cause inconvenience. Sadly, this mistake has now riddled our entire communities. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us adab, respect, etiquettes, mannerism, so that it can refine our life and our character, and we can be a motivation to others. Ameen, ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. All our Muslims are humbly requested to 